It's not easy to make good AI in Game Builder Garage. There's no code to work with or behavior trees, and probably the best tools at our disposal, like marker nodons, are not explained well, if at all, in the tutorials. So we're going to try and rectify that situation a little bit today by going over a few tips and methods on building better AI. And these fellows in the background, we'll get to them a bit later. I'm also sharing a download code for a demo game that includes several examples of things that we'll be doing today. Essentially, we're gonna break it down into three different kinds of AI behavior. Sequential, state-based, and a hybrid system. Sequence-based AI is when a character just does a sequence of operations. Our first build is going to be Chill Joe. He is going to follow a simple patrol sequence. And he is a simple person set to lime green with a frame of reference for motion of world. Now you want all of your AI agents to use a world frame of reference because if they're set to camera, they're going to do weird things when you start to move the camera around. Now, there's a few methods of doing sequence based AI. You can use marker nodons, a bunch of timers, or just a counter with a lot of comparisons. Now these can either be nodon heavy or they can be difficult to follow logically. So we're going to use this system. We want Joe to always be following his sequence. So we'll get a constant node on, run it through a timer, in this case two seconds, and put that into a counter. A starting value of zero, set to looped, with a range of zero to 12, because we want 12 steps. Now to make the counter work with the marker node on, we need a map. In the map, the input range will be 0 to 11, one less than what's in the counter. And an output range of 0 to 1. Now you can see, as the counter goes up, it will move the blue marker inside of the marker node on from left to right. Ideally, you want to size this in a way that corresponds to your numbers. In this case, I made it 12 units wide. Then we can use bullseyes and plant them on the track of the marker node on. This way, we can make actions or other things happen when the blue marker indicator goes through the bullseye. In this case, we want to make Joe go to the right, backward, left, and forward to complete a circuit. We don't want him to go full speed, so we're going to have a constant node on set to 0.45 that we multiply all of our inputs through. When we want a negative value on the movement, we'll add an inversion node on. Once we connect this all through, you can see that Chill Joe will walk through his route. But one of the benefits of marker nodons is that there are multiple ways to do things. And in this case, we can make his movement smoother. So we'll get rid of the timer and connect the constant nodon directly to the counter. This is gonna speed things up, but we can change the range of the counter to go up to 600 and adjust the map so it does the same thing. Now we can set the bullseyes to rectangles instead of circles so they can be activated whenever the indicator is somewhere inside of the rectangle. Now we can place them and change their size so that they smoothly transition into one another and that's going to give Chill Joe some diagonal movement and make him look more natural. We're just making Joe walk jump and emote here, but you could do all kinds of different things on this timeline editor for the character's AI. Next, we're going to work with a state-based system, and we're going to be using Little Dave here. He is a small purple person node on with a location sensor. Our player character also has a location sensor. The wormholes are here just to keep everything clean. 
And what I wanted to show you with Dave is that you don't always need a big complex marker setup. In this case, Dave is gonna have two states, following and resting. And we can do this with three nodons, a button press, a flag, and an and nodon. When we press the button, we turn the flag on. When we press the button and the flag is on, we turn it off. In that way, we're effectively managing two states of action. So once we have that toggle set up, we can do a simple character follow, which is subtracting the following person's X and Z from the target person's X and Z. Normally, we take the results from the subtraction and run them directly into the person. But now we want the flag to dictate whether little Dave should be following or not. So we'll add another multiply node on and put the flag and this output. If the flag is on, it will multiply by one. So it's basically just a signal pass through. It's not quite working perfectly, and that's because our button wasn't set to on press. So it was just making the flag go in a crazy loop whenever we press the button. And that was a quick and easy state-based system. Lastly, we'll go over a hybrid system that has both states and sequences. In this setup, we have a player character on a runway with a fancy object, an alien. We have three launcher nodons whose input signal comes from a wormhole exit. And this 2D marker nodon looks a bit different. It's on a grid. So the way that I've designed it is so left to right is the sequence and bottom to top is the state. For our top to bottom, we have a counter that can go from 0 to 3, and in this case we have a button press to switch between those states. And since that is on the y-axis, we'll connect it to the y. And you can test it and see that it's working. For our x-axis, we have a constant node on into a half-second timer, and in this case we wanted 5 units so that there's a little break in between firing the projectiles. So that's working. Once we have it set, we'll bring in our wormhole entrances and label them correctly. Then it's just a matter of attaching the bullseyes to the right wormhole. Using this, we can do a mini boss type encounter by changing the pattern that the projectiles come out. Stage one can be left, middle, right. Stage two can be right, middle, left. And then for the final stage, the boss can fire all three every single time. And that would look like this. We're trying to get to the alien, and each time we attack him, for example, he can send us back to the beginning and change his attack pattern. So we need to memorize the pattern before we can defeat him. In the game demo, whose download code is in the description and comments, I have an example of each of the things that we did today and a few extras. So we have Chill Joe, we have Launchy Eric, who will shoot projectiles at the end of his patrol. We have Smooth Samantha that uses the smooth movement. And we have Feisty Dom, which switches between chasing you and patrolling when you press a button. I hope this helps build some better, simple AI systems for your games.